Yo, what is up guys? Back with a video that everyone has been requesting. I ask yourself, what video is this? Uh, this is not going to be an update video or nothing to do with the all-wheel drive hatch this, on this video. Um, on this one, we're going to be basically just doing a video of my daily driver. Show you what that car is right now. Alright, so here's my daily. It's a 99 Honda CRV. I picked it up a couple months ago. Originally, this was an automatic model, but I have uh, recently converted it to five-speed. Um, I actually ended up using the transmission that used to be in my all-wheel drive hatch. Um, reason for that, you guys will find out. All right, so here it is. Uh, while I did the swap, I did also put a B16 head on this. I still have AC and power steering, as you can see. Um, it's a bit dusty here, but I do live on a dirt road. But yeah, man, here it is. So here's what we're going to be doing to the CRV. Um, my plan is to boost it on roughly 7 pounds. Here's the manifold I'll be using. It's Schedule 10. It's one of the manifolds you can find on eBay. Um, I've used them before, except for I haven't used this one. This one's supposed to be AC power steering compatible. I did mock it up on a motor and it did look like it was going to work, but we never know. We're going to find out. Um, but that's the manifold. And here we have a universal uh, charge pipe kit. We got our intercooler. We have a couple exhaust bands. Uh, fake HKS blow valve. Can't stress that enough that it's fake because I only paid 40 bucks. Uh, GT30, uh, what is it? GT3077. R, it's like the eBay knockoff of the Garrett 30R. Um, I've used it before with really good luck. Probably bought about a dozen of those. Um, we got oil feed line, a whole lot of flanges, the restrictor plate for the turbo, um, resonator for the car. I also have an exhaust for it that I'm going to be installing on it. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff here. But yeah, let's get started on this. Alright guys, the first thing I'm going to do is get the car on some jack stands and start removing anything that might be in the way, uh, like the exhaust manifold and the factory air box and uh, just seeing how the manifold will fit up. Now that I got everything cleared out of the way that I think I need, I had to pull the radiator, the exhaust manifold, the intake. Now I'm going to mock up the manifold and see how it fits. Well, I saw that one happening. If you look, the manifold is hitting the power steering bracket bolt right here. So I'm going to have to pull that off too and figure something out there. But it looks like the turbo will clear the AC compressor. We'll get that off right now. it now. So let me grab one of the exhaust nuts. It's clearing the block. And I mean there's enough room for a downpipe but it's it's gonna be tight. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. It's gonna be really tight. <laughs> I'm gonna do some sweet pie cuts. That might have to happen. And I about got the the manifold studs in right now. I'm just having uh, issues with this last one. For some reason, it's uh I think they drilled the hole crooked into the flange when they drilled it and tapped it with a stud. So the actual turbo is having a hard time going on. A little crooked, but I think we can smack it off. There it is. This next thing I need to do is clock the center cartilage right here, the center of the turbo, correctly. Because right now the the inlet and the outlet aren't pointing where we want them to be. So it's pretty easy to do that. You just legitimately just loosen these bolts, and you could twist it in whatever direction you need. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to mount on the car, and we're going to do that next. All right, so once we get them all loose, you can see you can rotate the whole housing. And this is our inlet right here. So we want this facing upwards, and you want to clock it somewhere where your feed line is not going to make contact with the turbo manifold. So we just need to find the sweet spot on this one. In our case, it's probably going to end up being around here, just because I bought a 90 degree uh, line for this. So, we'll set this right there. I'm just going to snug two of the bolts down. And now we're going to install it and make sure that it's clocked correctly. Dude, that is a freaking close fit right there. Yeah, it's going to be rough getting the radiator in there. No, I mean like in between oh, the, block the block yeah, and the that. turbo housing, it's like right there. Right on it. Yeah, when I'm holding it, it's it's got a little bit of clearance. <laughs> yeah. I still got to rotate this a little more. All right. But uh, here, let me just get this on there actually. Yeah, dude, that's barely going to work. We're going to have to trim this bracket, like I said. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can use the factory full-size radiator, just taking a look at this. I think I'm going to have to uh, install a half-size EGEK-style radiator in here. Um, because if I, I, if I did get a full-size radiator, I don't think there'd be any room for the secondary fan. So what I'm thinking is using the half-size and then mounting the, the fan right on this condenser here. Alright guys, the next step we're going to be doing right now is we got the, the manifold mocked up. But we're going to be pulling this crash brace off. Luckily on the CRV model, it's completely separate from this little piece. This little piece is pretty important but it, because uh, it actually holds the top of your bumper up so it won't let it sag. So we're going to remove the crash brace, remove these horns, and we're going to mount these horns on the corner bolts. And uh, we're going to actually take the intercooler and see where we can uh, run all the charge piping on the vehicle. So we're going to do that right now. All right. I think what we're going to have to do in this case with the CRV, we're actually going to have to get the bumper, which is over here. We'll put it on a paint stand. We got to trim it out for the intercooler. There's not a whole lot of room on these bumpers for an intercooler. You see these boosted pretty often. I see them without bumpers or that bottom half at least. So we're going to get a paint stand, put it up there, trim it out. So we're basically trimming the bumper to fit the intercooler versus putting the intercooler on the car, then trimming it that way. I don't know if that even makes remotely any sense. Yeah, probably not. No, no, no sense. Yeah, you just see what we're doing. Because we're going to have to trim even these for the charge pipe. So 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim it to that height and then just follow it. So basically to that, I just go the way back because there's no point cutting it all the way to the surface. Yeah. Because it's not going to sit there more than likely. Okay. We'll start here. Alright, so what I did here is we got the bumper on. We got the bumper on the car, and I've gone and made a small Sharpie line right here, and a Sharpie line up on top where this opening is. So we have a reference point where to mount the intercooler on the car. So we're going to pull the bumper back off and try to come up with some sort of brackets to hold it up. One inch, and the three inches. And the three quarter, and that's good. Switch. That's kind of what we need. Some drill surface. Actually, we want to be over yeah. here. We'll do that one first. All right. There it is. What's up? Is that the bolt? For the bottom bracket, we're going to be using this little L bracket. It's going to be going right here. There's no threaded hole, so we're just going to drill out a hole and use this rib nut tool. It uses these little neat inserts that expand like rivets. Then they have threaded holes inside where you can bolt a, a 10 mil in here, like a 10 mil Honda bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. This guy goes right on this. You spit it on. Stick it in there and you run it off. Just like that, you got a threaded hole to use for your intercooler. Alright, now we're gonna Go ahead and put the bumper on and hopefully it clears. I'm going to have to do more trimming. We are going to be doing some trimming somewhere. Oh yeah, not much though. We're pretty close in the ballpark. Yeah, just touching a little there, but yeah, yeah. And we're gonna have to trim right here. I'm gonna have to trim more off of that guy. Yo, what's up, guys? It's the next day. Uh, the other day, I ended up having to go run a couple errands. I got a couple calls, so I had to go take care of some stuff. But it is the next following day, and yesterday I did get the intercooler um, fitted or we made the brackets for the CRV and we also trimmed the bumper. 
there it is guys there's the intercooler mounted and the bumper trimmed it looks freaking awesome fits really tight and you know I try to cut as minimal as I could from the bumper and also I have the turbo here and I put that 90 degree coupler at the end of it and I cut as you can see down there some of the plastic uh, where the charge pipe is going to sit but you see that radiator mount is going to have to be removed and I think I'm going to remove this one because we talked about going half size radiator so what I'm going to do is remove both of these brackets mount the half size radiator on this left side uh, then I'm going to re reuse the factory brackets just re-weld them where they need to be I may not have to move that one but I'm, I'm certain I do so I'll bring out the half size I'll bring it over here I'll check real quick and uh, I'll probably end up uh, removing the spot welds on those brackets alright guys I got the radiator mounted and sure thing I'm gonna have to move both of the brackets down there um, it's completely in the wrong spot then also another issue is I just have to quickly rotate the compressor housing because um, it's not giving me quite enough room on this side of the radiator as you can see it's kind of sitting crooked so I'm gonna go ahead and remove those brackets for the radiator and clock the turbo slightly different alright guys so I got the bottom brackets both removed from the car and now what I'm gonna do I've prepped the area down here where I'm gonna be welding the bracket that's where the radiator will sit so I will take this and weld it on there I already got the welder out here so I'll just throw some tacks on it and she'll be ready to go alright guys so I got the bottom bracket mounted in here just wanted to show you real quick it's down there you can vaguely see it but I have the radiator sent on it then I have this bracket just holding it in place my plans are I'm just gonna make a little steel bracket that'll go on to this factory location and just go to this hole because it just happens to line up so I'm just gonna utilize that so I'm gonna make this bracket and then after I make this bracket what I need to do is get this all this charge pipe uh, cut and ready to weld I'm gonna be taking that to one of my friends um, and I also have to cut a hole down here on the bottom of this like by this condenser that's where I'm gonna shoot the hot side of the charge pipe to the intercooler so I got Alright guys, so I got all the charge pipe bolt cut out and fitted right now. And this is what I got going on. So it comes of course from the throttle body. We got, this is for the bluff, that's where the flange will go. We'll have the bluff valve right there. And it goes down, goes through the hole. It comes around, I kept it as tight as I could so that's why I did a 45 and another 45 
and I hammered this down a bit just so I wouldn't have to cut the bumper a whole lot. And then this side was really easy. It was just a 90 degree coupler. And then it's just going right to this coupler that's on the turbo, which is another 90 degree. So that was really easy. Uh, next step is going to be for me to scuff all this pipe up. You can kind of see how I did it right here. It's kind of dull. Uh, and what I do is just use this this red pad, sanding pad. Um, and I just scuff the whole thing. Once I do that, I'm going to actually put Sharpie marks. So the, it, the pipes are clocked correctly where they need to be. And I'm going to take them to one of my buddies to get a TIG welded because I, I, I just don't TIG weld. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. Damn, he's going to get that done for it for me and uh, I guess while he's doing that I still gotta take uh, take care of the oil pan I gotta pull it off and do uh, do the oil return line so yeah I'm gonna get to it and start pulling all the pipes off Right, guys I got the charge pipe from Micah it is the following morning but I just went and picked it up and I gotta say he did a great job welding all the joints up on the charge pipe he had a bit of uh, an issue with the blow off valve um, there's some weird anodizing on it and he couldn't quite get it off but the rest of it came out amazing really nice stuff here So I'm pretty happy how that turned out. And uh, I guess the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to throw the blow off valve on the charge pipe. And I'm still doing other stuff like I got still got to do the down pipe. Still got lots of stuff to do. But I'll show you guys when I get some more work done. Hey guys, sorry to say, but I'm going to have to cut off the video here. It's getting a bit too long. I don't want to be uploading a 40 minute video. I have horrible internet. Um, but don't worry about the second part. I'll be uploading that very soon and you'll be seeing how the CRV runs and drives. Um, but until then, thanks for watching.